In this video, I'm going to show you how I created unique portrait backgrounds using different kinds of light, in camera, in the dark. Uh, hey, wait, guys, I still need light. No, I'm not ready. Uh, oh, come on, really? Hey gang, you heard me right. I said unique portrait backgrounds in camera, in the dark. The possibilities with this technique are endless, and it's actually a lot easier than you might think. I created the backgrounds by painting with light while making the exposure. Now some of you may be thinking that light painting has been around for decades and it's not very practical for shooting portraits. With most cameras, you would be thinking correctly. Indeed, you can do light painting with pretty much any camera that has a bulb mode that will allow you to lock the shutter open. But my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II camera has a live composite feature that gives me incredible control and dramatically simplifies the process in a way that makes it easy to create cool portrait backgrounds in real time. So I'm gonna show you how I did it with my Olympus camera, but be sure to stay tuned until the end and I'll give you some really useful tips for doing this with other cameras using the bulb shutter setting. In live composite mode, the camera shoots a series of images continuously using the same exposure time. All the images are combined together in a single composite in camera. The first image is used to record the ambient light. After the first exposure, only the brighter pixels in any of the following images are used. If nothing becomes brighter in the scene, nothing changes in the picture. <laughs> I can see that confused look on your face. So let me walk you through the steps. I have my EM1 Mark II and the Emsweco 45mm f1.2 Pro Lens mounted on a tripod. To make the process even easier, I'm shooting tethered to my laptop using a Tether Pro cable from Tether Tools and the Olympus Capture software. This allows me to set the computer up behind my subject like you see here and then control the camera and watch the image build as I'm moving the lights around. To set the camera up in live composite mode, you must work in manual exposure. So before I enter live composite mode, I will decide on the aperture that I want to shoot at and select a shutter speed ranging from half a second to 60 seconds. For my studio portraits, I use the camera's base ISO of 200. Next, by dialing the shutter speed all the way down past 60 seconds, I will find the live composite setting and by clicking the menu button at this point, I can tell the camera what exposure duration I want to work with. Two important tips that I learned while perfecting this technique, don't use autofocus and don't use auto white balance. Since I'm working in a dark setting and since I will potentially move my lights in front of my subject as well as behind my subject, I don't want the autofocus to hunt. So manual focus is the solution. And the same with white balance. Since I'm using all different colored lights, I don't want the color balance to shift during the exposure. When I press the shutter the first time, the camera enters live composite mode. Once it confirms it's ready, I press the shutter a second time and the flash will fire and record the establishing shot that the composite will build on top of. You can see on the LED screen that I have my subject but still no background. Now the camera will continue recording images until I press the shutter button again to stop the process. You can see how the image builds in real time as I move the wand around behind my subject. Pretty cool, huh? I wind up with a full resolution raw file that is exactly what I saw in live preview. You can set a duration of anywhere from half a second to 60 seconds for the composite frames and the camera will allow you to do this for a total exposure time of up to three hours, which is much more than you need for a portrait. I used a setting of five seconds and my total exposure time for most of my shots was no more than 30 seconds. Now I know some of you are already asking that question and my answer is, whatever you have available. Be creative. The first shot that I showed you was done using the Yangwino YN360 LED video light wand. You can find these on Amazon for about 80 bucks, but you don't need to spend that much money. This background was created with 22 inch glow sticks that you can get at a party store for less than $10. I waved them around and it created a kind of smoky feel. This colorful background was created with a pair of light up LED gloves that have different color modes. I purchased the gloves online for less than $15. Notice that you can also move your light in front of your subject to help create a feeling of depth in your shot. Here is a version that I did with a black light bulb. The possibilities are truly endless. You could work with a flashlight or if you have a fiber optic party light or even the light from your cell phone could be used to create a cool background. 
You may remember in this video, I showed you how I used the Yangwen-O light wand and painted with light to photograph the aluminum flower. I explained how it was a trial and error process to get the exposure just right. With live composite, there is very little trial and error. Here's a simple product shot of an Olympus camera done with live composite. You can see that I'm able to watch the light build during the exposure and that allows me to decide where I need more light. Notice that the light source is an iPhone. So you see live composite is an extremely useful feature in many genres of photography, not just star trails and night landscapes. Here's a shot created by Olympus visionary Mike Bonig. Mike took this iconic Chicago landmark and using a 12mm lens on an Olympus OMD EM1 shot at f22 with 1 second shutter speeds. The live composite feature allowed him to record the theater marquee and leave the shutter open long enough to record the headlights and taillights without overexposing the marquee. In this shot, Olympus visionary Peter Baumgarten used the OMD EM1 Mark II with an 8mm fisheye lens at f1.8 and shutter speeds of 20 seconds. The live composite feature prevented the light from the home and its reflection on the water from becoming overexposed while recording the star trails. Here's an image by Olympus visionary Jamie McDonald that uses the live composite feature with eighth of a second exposures over an eight minute time period to record the Philadelphia skyline and catch multiple lightning strikes. Live composite isn't just for shooting in the dark. Here's a shot from Olympus visionary Frank Smith done in daylight with a neutral density filter using one second exposures that gives the clouds a painted effect. If you're not using Olympus cameras, you can still create your own portrait backgrounds by using the bulb shutter setting in your camera. The major difference is that there will be a lot more trial and error because you'll have to work out the exposure instead of having the camera do it for you. You'll need a remote shutter release that has a bulb setting to lock the shutter open for the duration of your exposure. And for portraits like the ones that I did, you'll want to work in a totally dark room so that there is no ambient light accumulating in your frame. If you're shooting on a bulb setting, I would recommend working at a very small aperture like f16 or f22. Power up your flashes to give you enough light at that aperture, and then if you're using LED light sources like I did, you'll have more time to work with adding the light to your shot without having the lights immediately overexposed and become too bright. I hope this gives you some ideas. Take this idea and run with it. Go create and show me what you come up with. Hey, until next time, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. Now go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, <laughs> it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.